Now we get to the real fun part of Munishige's life. The Sekigahara campaign. <laughs> Shige disliked Ishida Mitsunari, the de facto leader of the Western Army, i.e. the Toyotomi Loyalist Forces. Tokugawa Yasu is said to have offered Murashige large amounts of rewards upon Tokugawa's victory. Land, gold, who knows what. Murashige flatly refused the rewards and joined the Western Army. He took a force of a few thousand men to participate in the siege of Otsu Castle. He utilized a gunnery formation that was devised by Tachibana Dosetsu against the forces of Kyogoku, Takatsugu, and ultimately, Otsu fell to the Western Army. However, before they could move on to participate in the rest of the war, Tokugawa beat their allies at Sekigahara. Murashige and his cohorts immediately abandoned Otsu and started the desperate trek back to their home provinces. Murashige moved to Osaka Castle and declared his intention to help defend the mighty castle. However, it is said that Mori Taramoto, the actual commander in title of the Western Army, convinced him that he'd be better off defending his own home, since Tokugawa was, was on his way and would most likely be attacking Osaka in force very soon. An interesting story I read, which may well be more folklore, is that on the docks at Osaka's port, Murushige came upon Shimazu Yoshihiro, the man who commanded the overall operation that resulted in Takahashi Shoun's death. Yoshihiro either offered to let Munishige take his head, or it was suggested that Munishige could take Yoshihiro's head by force. Munishige, after all, had troops who were faster and with higher morale than Yoshihiro's. The story goes that either Yoshihiro or someone nearby stated to Munishige, This is the only chance you'll get to avenge your real father. Munishige is said to have not only refused to kill Yoshihiro, stating that killing a defeated warrior is not an honorable action. But in the end, Munishige and Yoshihiro actually worked together to flee Osaka and get back to their home territories in Kyushu. Munishige was up against the likes of Kato Kiyomasa, Nawashima Naoshige, and Kuroda Josui. And to top things off, the highest numbers I've seen for Munishige's forces were 32,000. So he was outnumbered as well. This is the kind of thing that Munishige excelled at. He didn't just hole up in his castle and await defeat like so many others. No. He sallied forth and engaged in his usual brand of guerrilla fighting and managed a pretty respectable defense of his lands. Murashige, however, was low on supplies, and each engagement against the likes of Kato, Kuroda, and Nabashima ended with him taking irreplaceable casualties. Murashige lost several prominent Tachibana commanders and high numbers of troops. After one final ambush, he figured he had enough space between himself and the opposing forces to return to Yanagawa Castle and try to hold out against the siege. Unfortunately for Munishige, the Tokugawa allies were hot on his trail, until they came upon a Buddhist temple south of Yanagawa. They were surprised to find the nuns of the convent had apparently donned armor and marched out to act as Munishige's rearguard, led by a young nun named Tachibana Ginchio. Munishige had been wounded in the fighting, and had to be carried to his horse. In the end, cooler heads prevailed, eventually, and Kuroda and Kata, who had fought along Munishige in Korea, had convinced him to surrender. Interestingly enough, apparently Shimazu Yoshihiro had sent troops to reinforce Munishige, but they arrived three days after he surrendered, and simply went back home. Munishige had been a thorn in Tokugawa's side during the Sekigahara campaign, and had openly refused to join Tokugawa's side. He was labeled a rebel and stripped of his lands and titles. Now a powerless ronin, he received offers of employment from the likes of Maeda Toshie's son Toshinaga, you may remember he offered a similar deal to Takayama Bukan, and Kato Kiyomasa. It is said that Kato himself petitioned Tokugawa to reinstate Munishige as a daimyo. Three years later, Tokugawa finally relented and gave Munishige a small fife far in the north. Hard to find a place further away from his ancestral homelands. Munishige was eventually forced to take part in the siege of Osaka on Tokugawa's side, fighting against his old allies and on the front lines, no less. He served in Tokugawa Hidetada's division and fought against Mori Katsunaga for his efforts and loyalty to the Tokugawa cause, whether voluntary or by force of hand. In the end, he was eventually restored to his family's ancestral lands at Yanagawa, although the domain had been reduced from about 130,000 koku to a mere 100,000 koku. Murashige was one of the men charged with educating Tokugawa Hidetada's son, Iemitsu. 
His last hurrah came in 1637, when he participated as a Kyushu daimyo in the pacification of the Shimabara Rebellion. His brother had abandoned the Takahashi name after being defeated during the Sekigahara campaign and had become a Tachibana as well. As I may have mentioned earlier, Munishige didn't have any children of his own. So, he adopted his younger brother's son as his heir and retired after Shimabara. He died in 1643, at the age of 76 years old. He was a man adept at both war and art. He worked his way up from a minor retainer to one of the most powerful men in the country. A true example of what a samurai was supposed to be. Well, that's it for Tachibana Murashige. Come back next month when we'll talk about a new topic. What will it be? Well, why don't you leave us a comment telling us what you want to hear about. Until then, you can check out part one of Munishige's video if you missed it or forgot something about him by clicking on the left side of the screen. Likewise, you can click on the right side of the screen to view a playlist of the rest of the Samurai Gaiden videos.